Hey tea friends and family, I am Megan Bristow, this is Pocha Bristow, and we are drinking the best tea in the world, my favorite tea in the world, hojicha. But we're actually drinking two different hojicha side by side. It's another beautiful autumn morning, and it's Friday, my favorite day of the week. So make yourself a cup of tea, preferably hojicha if you have it, and come and join me. Welcome to Tasting Teas. Welcome to my living room. Right, so it's Friday morning. I'm feeling good. I've had a really rough week. I've had a really rough two weeks, if I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. And all I want to do today is drink hojicha and maybe later go out and enjoy the beautiful autumn sunshine. It's my favorite season and it's my favorite month and it's my favorite day of the week. Three is such a powerful number for me. Three is also like the perfect amount of infusions that you can get out of a decent hojicha. Roasted green tea from Japan. It certainly isn't the most complex of teas, but for some reason it is my absolute favorite and it is the tea that makes me happy when I am feeling down. And this particular, these particular hojichas, I have a kagabocha hojicha, and I have a hida no tsuyu, hida no tsuyu hojicha. Both of these were very kindly sent to me by Gunnar, the cha dude. Arigato, honto ni arigato. Uh, thank you so much for sending me hojicha. Now, the cha dude has sent me these hojicha because he knows that it's the best tea in the world and that it's my favorite tea because he is a known member of the cult of hojicha. At least he is a known member to me and I know this because I am the founder of the cult of hojicha. PM me if you'd like to get in. I have previously reviewed two hojicha on this channel and I will link to both of them here and in the description box below. It's also Pocha's favorite. We are brewing three grams of each tea in two clay teapots. I was gonna say matching, they are not matching. One of them is a teapot, one of them is a kyusu, a tokode kyusu, so it's a side handle teapot. And we're gonna be using freshly boiled water. That's the nice thing about hojicha, it is the most forgiving green tea. You can oversteep it, you can use boiling, you know, freshly boiled water, and it, it doesn't go bitter on you. Certainly no hojicha that I've had, and I've had plenty. So I don't know much about these teas, but what my eyeballs are telling me are that um, the kagabocha, so this is entirely stems, if I'm not mistaken, and it's very clearly roasted. You can see the brown color. Whereas the hida no tsuyu um, is very green. There are some stems in here, but then there's also um, flat leaves. They look a little bit like sencha, and it doesn't look roasted, but of course it has to be roasted, otherwise it wouldn't be a hojicha. So this is obviously a very, very light roast. Now the kagabocha, the one that is very dark in color, smells like burnt brown sugar and caramel, a little bit of hay, whereas the hida no tsuyu, the one that doesn't look roasted, smells, <laughs> funnily enough, smells like a chocolate orange, a dark chocolate orange. So the kagabocha in the kyusu, warm kyusu. Ooh, a little salty, little hint of butter. So it's kind of like, I guess maybe a little hint of umami since we're talking about nihoncha here. And um, definitely smell that roast. That smells like salted caramel a little bit. Oh. Smelling closer to sencha. You can tell it's definitely the lighter roast one, not just in appearance, but also in smell. It has a bit more of a green grassy smell. 
It's losing its dark chocolate orange smell. Oh no! But still a nice, subtle uh, hint of roast. Not surprisingly, the color and the difference of the liquor is very obvious. So the Hidenotsuyu on the left is very yellow-green, like a Japanese sencha. And the Kagabocha Hojicha on the right is that sort of dark, um, not dark, but sort of amber-brown color that you would expect of Hojicha. So let's go for the Kagabocha. Uh, cheers to autumn, to October's to Fridays, to hojicha, to pocha, and last but not least, to the cha dude. Oh. Oh. Light to medium body, quite a brisk mouthfeel, no astringency, no bitterness, Right away, you get a really pleasant, sweet roast, and then it's smooth caramel, smooth caramel and a little bit of wood smokiness. And it's not, it's not just as simple as wood smokiness, it's, er it's like an aromatic wood. You know what I mean? It's like an old wooden chest or like wardrobe, and you like to open it up just cause it, so you can smell the wood inside. Because <laughs> that's what I do with old chests and wardrobes. What do you do? This is the Hida no Tsuyu. So the one that's lighter roast. So different. Same body, sort of light to medium, but this is probably a little bit more medium. Again, very brisk mouthfeel. Nothing bitter, nothing astringent. This one almost reminds me of, again, Maicha. So your um, typically sencha with roasted rice, but it can also be bancha with roasted rice. Um, that's what it reminds me of. Because there's a greenness still to it, but it's not a springtime or even a summertime greenness that you would expect in nihoncha and sencha. This is definitely like green grass that knows, hey, autumn is here, why are we still green? Um, and then you get the really pleasant, but it is very subtle roast. But whereas this one is sweet and caramel and wood smoky, this roast is more nutty and toasted and savory, like again, maicha, as I mentioned. Ah, oh, I love tea. So interesting. So after having the more savory hidanotsuyu, going back to the kagabocha. Is it kagabocha? Yeah, kagabocha. I can read. Um, the kagabocha actually really tastes like salted caramels now. This is a uh, sakura cherry wood uh, tea scoop, really pretty. Um, and pocha can skateboard on it. <laughs> mm. Oh. It's like when we had those uh, almond biscottis, the bitter almond biscottis with da hong pao. Oh, so final thoughts. If you know, the cha dude knows his nihon cha. He really knows his hoji cha. They're both lovely. And yeah, you can call it a biased opinion if you want, but I also think it's just fact. I think they're both lovely. <laughs> Which do I prefer? Because there's definitely some preferential treatment here.
I do prefer the kagabocha, the more heavily roasted one that's made up mostly of stems or maybe entirely of stems. I just like things that are a bit, a bit more roasted, especially when it comes to my hojicha. Now, if I was drinking the hide no tsuyu, if I was drinking this one just by itself and didn't have a comparison with this one, this would be a damn fine hojicha and I would have no complaints about it and I'd be like easy sailing. But when it is put against the kagabocha, <laughs> I, I love this one more. It's a bit deeper and darker and what can I say? I have a deep dark soul. Pocha agrees with me, by the way. This is really, I was gonna say made my day, but it's actually really made my week. Um, in fact, now that I'm sitting down and actually having a hojicha session, and I'm looking back on the week that I had, and I'm like, why didn't I just at any point sit down and decide to drink hojicha? That probably would have made me feel a lot better. Uh, uh, yeah. This tea just never ceases to amaze me in the way that it can just lift my spirits and how it's the perfect autumn and winter tea. That's all for today. Thank you for joining me for this tea session. Please get yourself some hoji cha. If you don't know where, ask me. I will recommend places for you to get hoji cha. I'd really like to thank the cha dude for sending me these teas and some others as well. As always, from me and Pocha, wherever you are, enjoy a good cup of tea, enjoy a good cup of hoji cha. See ya. Yeah. Sorry, I got lipstick on the cups. My bad. My bad.